Congratulations, you have purchased Bricks Builder and you want to know how to get started. Now Bricks Builder in itself is not that difficult, but I will help you out to get started. So let's get to it. So when you go to the website, you can log in into your account. You fill in your credentials. Mine is remembered by something called a password manager and it's called Keeper. It's not that expensive and it saves me a lot of time without me having to remember all my password credentials. So I can really recommend Keeper. I just fill in my record and hit login. Inside Bricks Builder, you can download the Bricks theme and you need to copy the license. Then you also need some kind of hosting. Now I can really recommend Hostinger. There will be a link down in the description below with an affiliate link. So I get a commission with no extra cost to you. And the pricing starts at 299. But if we look at the plans, we see that you can purchase this for 299 for 48 months, or you can set it to 12 months for 35 US dollars. Now I do know that there's always a coupon code somewhere floating on the internet for Hostinger. So I would recommend you to look into a discount code online. Once you purchase your hosting, you can just log in following the setup and with themes and plugins select that you don't want to install anything. It's very important because else you need to deinstall them one by one. Now for my tutorials I use something called InstaWP which makes it very easy for me to fire up a test website. So I will be doing that right now. Then I hit magic login and it will automatically log me in. It's a, such a breeze to use. If you'd like to use InstaWP as well there will also be an affiliate link down in the description below at no extra cost to you. So to install bricks, we go to themes, add a new theme and then upload the theme and we pick our bricks file there. We open it and install now and then we hit activate. It will activate and set up the bricks builder and then you need to activate the license. Remember the key that we copied before? You need to paste it in right here and your license will be activated the next thing we need to do is setting up bricks that you can use custom code. We can enable custom code execution. I would suggest to only set it for the administrator so that you are the only one that can execute code. This can be JavaScript, this can be CSS. And the reason why they set this is for extra security and that you're knowledgeable at least at what the code does. So that's why they have this in there. We scroll down and hit save settings. Now there's also some other settings I like to set. We can dismiss this one because we don't need it anymore. We go to general. I also would like to use Bricks Builder in my posts. I would like to be able to upload SVG files as an administrator. I don't want other people to do this as well, so I leave those disabled. You have the option to use a global class manager and that sort of things. Maybe it's good to keep it as is um, because it's not important for right now. And we can save so form submissions in the database. Nice if you haven't set up the proper way of your email forms yet. Then we go to builder access. I leave this as is because only the administrator may access Bricks Builder. For templates, I like Bricks Builder to create screenshots and show the thumbnail column. For the builder itself, I like to change when the logo is pressed. I want to go to edit in WordPress. Instead of viewing the page and in structure panel, I like to add the duplicate and delete elements section and expand when I activate an element. Now for performance, I leave this as is. If you want to optimize performance, you can play around with these settings to make your website even faster. Maintenance mode, I don't have to enable it right now. You have also API keys where you can set your Adobe fonts if you use it. You can set all kinds of API keys and other keys that you can use for your website. Custom code, we already covered that one. Inside templates, you can create your templates. So if we edit the template, you see that this is, looks like a very basic and old school WordPress editor. And on the right hand side, you are able to select what kind of template this is. This, for instance, is a header and the header is the navigation portion of your website. For instance, portion up here with the features, products, resources, but also your login account and that sort of things. You can also pick the footer, the single section, pop-up archive, for instance, your blog archive or for your custom post types and edit your search results and error pages. You can also set some kind of tags and bundles and featured images. I don't use them by default, but at least there are some options there. You can also install your custom funds. If you have some funds you want to use, 
you can install it just like in Elementor by naming it like Moolish. Then in here, you can set what kind of weight it has, what kind of style. And then in edit, you can upload the font file types. And now we have covered at least the basics. The next step is creating a page in your Bricks Builder. We can go to add a new page. We close this because we don't need to Gutenberg editor. We type in home page and we click the big yellow button that says edit with Bricks. When you press that one, it will take you to the Bricks Builder environment. On the left hand side, just like Elementor, you have all of the elements you can drag in, or bricks in this case. You have a section, container, div and block for your layout. For instance, a one column view, but you can also add another div and another div and another div in there, which you can see you have all kinds of this in there. And those are basically empty blocks that can be filled with anything you would like to. So if we go to the container again, remove the other ones we can also add a header some rich text and a button let's try to recreate a hero section so we select our section and it's good practice to use classes and why do you use classes because those are reusable sections that you can use throughout your website so if we call this hero and we press enter now we've created a class and if we add another section and we call this hero again we can see that the class is already available for us. If you can't find this, you can type it in and you can click hero. Now, they both have a class of hero. So what's the advantage you might think? Well, if you go, for example, to background and we add a nice color, you see that we can change it in one place and both of them change color. Now imagine doing that for your whole website. That saves a lot of time and in typography, we can set that in our hero section, we want a light color. And boom, there we are. Now you might say, I don't see it in this section. Well, you are right, because we didn't add any content in there. So let's do that next. Let's add a heading and text. And as you can see, it has a similar kind of result. That's the advantage of using classes. Let's remove this one and style the first one a little bit further. I want this to be a very big hero section. So we go into our, our style, you can go to layout and you can change, for example, your height. You can type in anything you would like to have, but you can also do unit of measures. For instance, VH, pixels or rem, and you can type in any unit of measure you would like to use. Now to learn that, you need to understand how CSS works. If you don't know how CSS works, then you might want to look into that as well. In this instance, I want this height to be 90% of the screen size. So we put it to 90 VH, which means that there's a little bit of breathing room, which helps people understand that there's more than just this section. Now, as you can see, you can do this on ID level. And that's how I used to do it on, on Elementor as well. Now, this isn't good practice because now it's only set for this section. So what we need to do is remove the height. And we can do that by hovering over the yellow dot and a cross will appear. Clicking that will remove everything that we've added. Now let's add another class. We call this hero wrapper and in here we set our height. Now this looks better but I want my content to be in the center. So we can go to content. In here by default flex is used so that's a very good thing. Then we can align everything that's inside of our content with align main axis. We can align to the center and we align it cross axis also in the center. There we have it. It already looks a little bit better. Now that we have set up a layout, we would like to change the, the text perhaps. You can do that by clicking in a text. And as you can see, you have some quick options and you can type in anything you would like. Hello world. And you see it reflected on the left hand side as well, as you can see. If you're using dynamic data like ACF or pods or Ditch Engine or whatsoever, you can select the dynamic data in here. And there's also some default dynamic data available, which makes it very easy to create a very powerful website. Now, because this page doesn't have any other content, I will select H1 because that's the best way of having your titles in there. Now we can also do some other kinds of styling we would like to add to the heading, but you can also change it globally. And you do that with settings. 
In settings you have theme styles and in here you can create another one by pressing this plus icon. You can name it for instance defaults and hit create. And in here you see that the conditions is already set for us for that we can use it for the entire website. You can also use it for specific pages, posts, archives or whatsoever. Now perhaps I want to change the color of the button. So what we can do is look for the element and here you have element button. When we select that one, we can change the border radius because for all of them, I want the border radius to be the same. Now we can type it in here and then we can select all copy paste it in there. But Bricks has a very smart thing for that. You can press this link icon and when you press it once, it will link up all the sites. And as you can see, it is reflected in the builder as well. Now, I don't really like the yellow button. And for this button, we have selected the primary style, which means the main style that we'll be using. So if we go back to the theme styles and then our button, we see that there is a primary style and we can change that any way we'd like to. So if we want this to be purple, you can change it to purple or to some kind of pink orangey. You can do that as well. And if you want to, because I don't think this is very readable, change the typography. You click on the typography button and press white and there you go. Now if you don't like these colors, we can add a new color palette called mine and then you create it, then select it from the drop down menu. And in here you can select the color like and for me, it, the one that I use is DA4014. And when you hit save, it will be saved in this color palette. So this way you can make your own color palette and make those changes on your website as well. You can see it reflected also if I press the typography, the color, click mine again. There we have our color that we just created. Now there are a lot of settings you can change and there's a lot of elements you can change. Whatever and whenever something needs to be changed by default, I recommend doing it in here. And then afterwards, add it also to classes if there's something important for you. Now, perhaps you don't have time to think about every portion of your website that you just want to get started really quick with a website. What you can do is open up templates, go to community templates. And here we have some free to use templates already available for you. You can scroll down. There's some available. There it's not very much, but it's enough to get you started. If you see one that you like, you can preview it by pressing the I or you can insert it by pressing the download button. This asks if you would like to override your theme style. You can say yes. Do you want to override your color palette? I would say yes. And there we have our website very quickly, very easily already done. And we can just get going on the contents instead of worrying about every design detail. One of the next things I would like to make with bricks is a navigation bar or a header so that people can navigate. And if you like to see that video, you can press that video right there. If you like this video, hit subscribe. And as always, keep designing.